Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting installment of Developer Dive. As most of you know, we recently finished up Pikmin 251 on stream, and the highlights have recently finished on YouTube. Pikmin 251 was such a pleasure, such a great project for the channel, and I was lucky enough to be able to get the man, the myth, the legend himself, Pickhacker, on to Developer Dive. So... Hello. Hello. What's going on? Working. Working. Um, there you go. Let's let's talk. Let's start with like the the basic basics. All right. How yeah. did, how did you get into Pikmin in the first place? The first experience I had with Pikmin was pretty late. Honestly, it was after the game two games were out. Oh. Okay. When I first played Pikmin, it was through we watching old Let's Plays. Mm -hmm. Some of the more popular ones. Like a like and a Chuck Conroy type. Yeah. Deal? Yeah. Yeah. For sure, that was what got me into the series. Okay. And then I, the first one I played was when it first came out on Wii. I got those. I played those first. I played the GameCube ones a lot later. Okay. But, yeah. It's funny. I've actually I've never played the Wii versions of the first. Yeah. Does Pikmin Two have a Wii version? Yeah, it does. The Wii version for Pikmin Two came out a lot later in the United States or something. Yeah, I, I've definitely at least it. seen gameplay of Pikmin One, but I cannot yeah. picture for the life of me Pikmin Two on the Wii. Yeah. I think nowadays I would say I prefer the GameCube controls. Yeah. And yeah. Because that's. I mean, a lot of people do like the Wii version, and I want to go back and remake a lot of these projects on the Wii version. Mm -hmm. The problem is it's a lot harder. We don't have the same resources for the Wii version. Sure. Especially I'm... regarding its code. Yeah, I mean, then that's you know that's something that you know you're equipped to touch on. Yeah. I recently found out that the majority of Pikmin 2 ROM hacking is through text files. Oh yeah, a lot of Pikmin 2 is text files, especially like caves. Caves are very easy to edit. That's why they're. That's why Kaizo focuses on those so much. All right, so this one's gonna seem obvious as well, but you know, why mm -hmm. is it called Pikmin 251? It, the 251 to me is like the number of like Johto Pokemon, like a Pokemon yeah, up to is. Johto. Is that is that why it's called that? No, the reason it's called that is because that's how many treasures are in the game. And you might think, oh, but wasn't there 252 treasures? And there is. There is 252 treasures. And the reason for that is because well after 251 is already established, I learned that the game does not like 251 treasures. You have to have a multiple of three or else the Piclopedia has issues. So I had to go back and add a 252nd treasure. Okay. And that's why you're still Sure. So then, you know, as we're on the topic of the treasures, obviously a big draw for Pikmin 251, and one of the, I think, the coolest things about it in general is the just sheer quantity of custom treasures. Like oh, yeah. Like, all the custom, the Nintendo references, all that kind of stuff. So is there anything you could speak on about how you, you know, got those models in there? Like, how, how did that come oh, about? Yeah. So the... The custom treasures come from a variety of places. There's a few that are just unused from the normal game. That's what those discs are, the GameCube discs. Mm -hmm. Those are from the actual game unused, and I re-added them. Wow. And there's a couple other treasures that were unused. Hmm. Other than that, mostly just models I found online, because I can't really do much by myself. With the exception of the actual levels, but I'll get to that later. Sure, but, and, and I mean that's yeah. something that I heard as well. That there, it, there is a an element of, um, you know, editing models like actual three D models when it comes to building oh, yeah. certain caves. Modeling, and... modeling is a big thing, big part of this. And it's something that I'm not the best at, but I made it work for here. Yeah, but that's why most of the treasures are just taken from other games. Mm -hmm. There's a few that I made from scratch. There's like a pair of nail clippers and a USB drive that. Are things I actually own. I mean, oh, yeah, very, awesome. very clearly, there is an outpouring of love just for Nintendo yeah. as a whole uh, in that game. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of them are games I've played. A lot of them, some I haven't. Some I, like, I, I put some treasures from uh, Metroid in there. Mm -hmm. I've played a few Metroid games, but not, not all of them. I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes I just put what I can find. Well, my favorite game, probably of all time, that isn't in. It's on a Nintendo system. It's not really first party, but mm. 
Ban Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie are some of my favorite. Games. Kazooie and Tooie. Okay, yep. Yeah, and you, and you probably can tell from the music in this hack. Right? Yeah, I feel like those game soundtracks. Yep. I, I mean, there was uh, Banjo Kazooie music like in Two Fifty One, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Several songs from both games are in Two Fifty One. I am no musician. I just mm -hmm. use whatever I can find. So who? Now yeah, who that. did the music um, for Two Fifty One? Pretty much all me. I mean, I didn't make the MIDI files because. What it is is you take MIDI files online, like you know, where it's just like instrument or it's just like notes, mm -hmm. and you have to provide all the instruments which Pikmin 2 has. And it's pretty much just a matter of seeing what instruments work well and what tracks. Oh, that's so well. interesting. So you just kind of like apply the the yeah. general sound font to the file, yeah, yeah, and it just pops yeah, out as an font. awesome like remix. Yeah, pretty much. It's all sequenced. It's like. There is some streamed music, like like directly WAV files. That's yeah. mostly for the cutscenes. Speaking of the interactivity in the music, like the different mixes, that was probably the hardest thing I did for 251 because it's all just editing binary hex data by hand and it was not pleasant. All right, so when figuring out the overall progression of the game, because obviously I know you thought about it because you made the player start with yellows. Oh, yeah. You know, what was, what's kind of your philosophy, your, your game okay. balance philosophy for that? Yeah. So, obviously, I wanted to change the pick when you start with, because that's a way to get a lot of mileage out of making the game feel new. So, I really only had three options, wild, purple, and white pick, and mm. really something I could do at the time. I didn't want to do reds, because that's the normal. I didn't want to do blues, because starting with blues kind of, breaks progression since water is such a good way to limit the player early on mm -hmm. one issue with yellows is since you throw them high it's easy to get them out of bounds and like, you can't whistle them back mm -hmm. especially on the gamecube version you had no one to whistle so i had to add a lot of invisible walls to this full while just so you can soft lock yourself yeah i mean that's something that i noticed um specifically in the flooded fields i want to say actually yeah, i mean yeah. there were i mean honestly in the wistful wild too there were invisible walls i was like wait why is yeah. there a wall there yeah there had to be since so you don't get screwed over gotcha no soft locking but, yeah but beyond that you get yell you get reds very early on and the reason for that is because you if you get purples and whites before reds the game doesn't really like that and mm -hmm. they crash when they carry stuff and I didn't know how to fix that back then, so I just made it so you get red second. Mm. I, I think that one of the things that I, I like the most about the progression that you have the player uh, do is that you get purples last. Oh yeah, for sure. That was something where I kind of wish I made it more obvious where you get them, because you do need them for a few things. But honestly, ideally, I think I would have just not had purples at all and made something original, but mm. yeah, that was too ambitious for me. It's hard to get purples where they're balanced mm. because obviously they're very overpowered normally so hey. almost any hack is going to nerf them you tried to balance them yeah they're still I broken might have gone overboard. no they're definitely. still broken no no definitely you did not go overboard i think that one of my favorite things about 251 even in comparison to you know the original games is how equal each type of pikmin feels uh, I think you did a, a really good job kind of um, balancing and playing to the strengths of each type uh, in order to make, you know, like red's not irrelevant and purple's not as broken and white's a little more relevant. That's a big thing about normal Pikmin games is you almost never need reds because obviously anyone can break the fire guys. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad I made reds more important. But as we're talking about Pikmin colors, I really want to talk about orange Pikmin. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. They were something I did just because I wanted to have something big, something to show on the cover is, oh, this is what's new here. We got Orange Pikmin. Orange Pikmin were very, very limited by what we were able to do at the time. Mm. We we didn't have the ability to add new onions. They couldn't put them in the ship. So there's really no way to keep them after you leave a cave. Sure. So the best thing I could do was just say, okay, well, they have to stay in the caves then. And that's it. And then... Hopefully they're worth using. Yeah. I think orange Pikmin are at the point where they're not so overpowered that it would be broken to give them an onion. I think an onion would still be balanced. Oh, no, definitely not. I mean, I, 
you know, obviously there's a lot of um, bomb rocks and dweevils and yeah, that yeah. sort of stuff. But I mean, it's I I never thought that the orange Pikmin were any type of overpowered uh, for what they were. So and honestly, I mean, I, I think every other type that's not blue is better than the orange Pikmin. But then, then I wonder, like, so, you know, if you wanted to stick them in the ship, for instance, uh, yeah. how, you know, you probably thought about replacing purples. Yeah, that was a little too complex for the time. I probably could have done that, mm. but I didn't really want to remove purples that badly. Mm. So, yeah, if I come back with that, might be something I like. Yeah, so, I mean, this, when did this uh, hack come out? Was it 2019? Uh, am I correct? Yeah, September 2019 is when it came out. Okay. I started about a year prior to that. So, you know, you're talking about custom Pikmin. We're talking about, you know, custom hazards, custom you know, whatever. The enemies, the, oh, yeah. the custom properties that they have. Just tell me a little bit about that. Well, changing the elements of enemies was a big thing that we were looking into at the time. Those were some of the very first edits we did to the game's code. Was, oh, wow, look, we can change the enemies have different elements. We can make this guy burn Pikmin. You can make, like, you can replace fire with spicy Pikmin. It's very strange how the game works. Wait, oh, with, like, the, the um, all yeah, the spicy like particles? Like, no, no, well, particles, but also, like, the actual what it does. Like, you can swap fire and water and poison and electricity and explosion. You can just, like, swap how Pikmin react to different enemies. And that was some of the first stuff we experimented with. And I wanted to use that in 251, of course. So sure. That's why you have stuff like the Poison Blowhog. That was one of the first mm -hmm. tests I did, and I just stuck with it. Yeah, you can make, like, the fire geyser the electric if you want. And then, so only yellow Pikmin could break that fire. Yeah. It would still look like fire, yeah. though. It would uh, yeah, visually it doesn't change, but it would electrocute Pikmin. That's super crazy. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird property of this game, but it, I'm glad it's as simple as it is, because that was really what introduced a lot of us to editing the game's code. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, obviously, you know, the, the enemies in general were made harder. Uh, I think with the oh, exception okay. of, like, the Wallywog, uh, or the Grey Wallywog, anyway. So the thing was, too, or just Pikmin 2 in general, is the easier thing to edit with enemies is... Give them more HP and make them move faster. So that was what I did with nearly all the enemies in 51 they move mm. faster. Because that was as much as I could do back then. Nowadays, I just think of more creative ways to edit the enemies. But yeah, that's just something I need to look into. Yeah. So then, of all of those enemies that you made, uh, you know, mm. what one is your favorite? What are you the most proud of, do you think? Uh, the, well, like you said, the Wuthering... There was a withering blowhog, it's now after what they called it, but it buries Pikmin and makes some flowers. That was a pretty cool one. I mean, looking back, I put it in some pretty questionable places and caves where it's behind a wall. That's always annoying. I mean, yeah. I, I was... That, in, in itself, that's my favorite enemy in the entire game. I think that's my favorite thing that came out of the game entirely, was yeah. just the, the thought of this, like, friendly balloon planting all of my guys, mm -hmm. like... To make the and then with the plucophone too, it's like it's insane. Oh yeah, well we got plucophone. That's a lot more helpful. Besides that, uh, the the withering dweevil is another one I really like how it came out. I like it actually makes sense. Like it could be a new dweevil entirely. Mm -hmm. That's something I like to do is have the new enemies not have to replace enemies. Yeah, that was something to do back then. Oh, so yeah, so they they do kind yeah. of um, they do replace. Uh, yeah, I couldn't add new things. So like the poison blowhog. There's no watery blowhogs in 251. Yeah. You have both. Is the water wraith faster? Oh, oh, for sure. Oh my god. I, I saw a video of him like, not long ago. And I was like, oh, geez, I cannot believe I made it that fast. That it's like, just it does not look fun. I felt <laughs> run down by the water wraith in yeah. the submerged castle. I was, I was, or not the submerged castle, the palace of the wraith. Yeah. I was yeah. shook. I was like, oh my god, like they, ha he had to have made it faster. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely faster. <laughs> okay. I wasn't crazy. Like, that wasn't placebo then. Like, it, it actually was it, faster. I think I made a drop in earlier, too, because normally it takes a while. I, I think you did as well, as it's yeah. kind of fresh in my brain. I mean, in the vanilla game, you can pretty easily get through the whole game without even seeing the way. I only thought I was bad at this game, but I played through the normal game a couple weeks ago, and I beat it and, a and, lot faster. I beat it in eight days, which oh. is, like, the fast you can possibly do without glitches yeah i mean honestly I I it's just like getting to the caves like you know where everything is already and yeah 
it's just really a matter of, of being able to unlock all the caves because then time obviously stops. Yeah, yeah, it's nice once you get in the caves and you have a moment of peace. Or yeah. Finally, I don't have to be in a hurry. Unless you're in some rich castle, then you have to be in a hurry anyway. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the areas. You know, we touched on oh. it very briefly earlier, talking about uh, the like invisible walls and kind of you know, sequence breaking, that sort of stuff. Uh, just tell me about the, the remix areas. Yeah. Well, obviously you started with Full Wild, and I'm really glad I did that, because for the, quite a while I didn't. If you go on my YouTube, I have videos of really early stages of 251, and it still had Valley of Repose. And I, I tried to remix that level as well, but, you know, in the end I just figured I might as well just change the level order, start it with Full Wild, and that's getting a lot of mileage out of the new experience. Oh, yeah. De I mean, I definitely really think so. Yeah, it's kind of like... It makes it more obvious you're continuing where the last game left off. And that's like, you start with the gold ship. I think that was the most mm -hmm. like, like, Oh my god. It's just, it just really continues where the last game left I, off. I don't even know if I have a, a, a comment or a question on the ship. But, okay, yeah. I, I said the flowery uh, blowhog was my favorite thing in the game. No, it's the ship captain. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to him. Yeah, sure. yeah, we'll, we'll definitely talk about him. But, um, yeah. yeah, you start in the Wistful Wild. Yeah, I Wistful thought it was Wild. really clever how... You didn't necessarily, you didn't change any of like the layout layout. Yeah. Uh, you obviously, I think you added different uh, like walls and that sort of thing. Yeah, that's the most I can do. We couldn't, we definitely could not edit the actual models at the time mm -hmm. unless we built it from scratch. But um, but changing the starting area and and working your way through the areas differently. Yeah. Uh, I think definitely added the mileage. Yeah, I was inspired by Pikmin 3 for that, the way it does like remixes of the mission mode levels. Mm -hmm. That was the right one inspired me to say, hey, I could take a map that already exists and like overhaul it, like start in a different area. That's what I did for Flooded Fields. I really, I think that would be my favorite of all the levels. I like how the whole flooded area looks. Oh, yeah. Like the I think, you know, I think Flooded Fields, b besides the foreboding forest, because I. I just love the the scope and the scale of it. I think the flooded fields was the most impressive uh, visually, and I know that there was a specific texture work done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the textures came out good there. Who did that? Was that you who did that texture work? No, the textures were made by a friend of mine. Okay, gotcha. Okay. But yeah, it's after that was Mystical Beach, which I like. I like how that level came out. Like, I think changing the textures looked nice. Mm -hmm. Looking back, I kind of wish I changed the layout more, like some of the gates. But there's only so much you can do with that level because it's already pretty complex. It's yeah, it's it's pretty uh pretty open for the most part, I think. Yeah, not it a is. lot of like I, corridors. Yeah, I, it was nice putting enemies that you don't normally see in overworlds, like the jelly floats and the dirigi pokes. Mm -hmm. I felt like that was a cool way to mix it. Up. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and then after that is the foreboding forest, which is obviously the original level that I did myself. Yeah, so I uh, totally tell just just open up the floor, the yeah. foreboding forest. Is it and somebody has has said this I think in the comments or my Discord or something, like correct me if I'm wrong, but they say that it is a unused like map from yeah. Pikmin 1 so, or 2. Yeah, so foreboding forest is three basically three models in one. You start in an unused test map from the first game. Mm. That's like that's where the wad cave is that you have to break the electric gate mm. and it's like Console. That's from the test map. Uh, the area leading up to the big tree is from the test map. And the big tree itself, obviously, I was inspired by Pikmin 3 for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I tried to recreate the same feeling when you're going up the big tree. But I think you succeeded. It's camera is pretty limited, so I couldn't do too much there. Yeah. And then the whole back half of the map where the last two caves are was a model that a friend of mine made and never used, so he just gave it to me. And I kind of just stitched it on. And I mean, looking back, the whole level is kind of huge. If I could have made it smaller, it was any piece of the Valley of Repose used at all, or is it just entirely uh, scrapped? I don't think so. I, I used a couple of assets from Valley of Repose. Like one of the caves has the same border that Frontier Cavern has, and even now, mm -hmm. that's pretty much it for the stuff I took. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, going back to to the caves, and this is a question that I asked um, Patty as well. Is there any particular cave that you're exceptionally proud of uh that you consider your favorite or maybe a layout you consider to be yeah. a crowning I'd achievement say, if i had to say what my favorite cave is probably the subterranean sands because i really like that beach theme i like how it looks 
I like the music there too. I was just gonna say, I think that one that one sticks out in my head. Uh, just yeah. just making a beach cave because you can. Yeah, it was a nice unique theme. The the whole casino theme was. I like how that came out visually too. Mm -hmm. I like the man at legs on the roulette table. I thought that, oh, that, yeah, was, that, was, that was pretty funny. Cool. One of the things that I thought was really interesting was the gambling section of oh, yeah. the uh, Gambler's Den. And tell me, tell me a little bit about that. Well, that was just, it, it was experimenting really with how the game's cave generation works. It's like, okay, yeah, you can just have a whole list of enemies. There's some good ones and some bad ones. There's like candy pop buds, bombs, rocks, eggs. Uh, so okay, so I was, I was correctly informed that there were good things that could pop out as well. Yeah, there are. It should be like 50, 50 between good and bad. Exactly. I, I got a rock, a bomb rock, and a volatile dweeble. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like the three bad things. <laughs> yeah. So that's just based on the generation of the cave. Like it just yeah. randomly generates. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff with how things you cave generate. It's very involved system. The whole, like, using purple Pikmin to make stuff fall from the sky, that exists in the vanilla game, but they only use it like, once, I think, in a challenge mode cave. In a challenge? Really? Yeah, I think it's the one where there's two water wraiths. There's, like, stuff that falls from the sky when you throw purple, so that's it. Huh. Okay, so we're here. Let's talk about it. Tell me about the ship. The ship the captain ship. is yeah. far and away... I was blow. I was just like, oh my god! Like, I'm so happy. You did not need to do that. You could have had yeah. the president. You could have had Louis, and that could have been it. Yeah, I, yeah. I almost did do that, but I don't know. I mean, I usually don't think of myself as that creative. A lot of the more creative stuff in 251 I got from other people, but the ship was like, okay. You know what? That actually is a good idea because the ship, obviously, it talks a lot. It's like one of the main parts of the story. Mm -hmm. We never really play. You never really like see the ship do much. I feel like it's the ship's turn to have its time in the spotlight. You're right. I mean, the ship is essentially, you know, the narrator. He talks ninety nine percent of the game. I, I really like how the character design came out too. The way I, I use like the fins as its legs and the little exhaust pipes for arms. I, yeah. think, like, I, I, I think my favorite is just like as he's running around, he just makes little tiny like ship noises as like yeah. his footsteps. Yeah, and like the whistle. Is this cash register it's sounds? Cash, yeah. Yeah, that's very funny. The, easily my favorite part of the entire game, like without a doubt. The the ship is just it's just incredible. The whole using the SS dolphin thing, that was a big part of the ship captain as well. Is the dolphin is cool, obviously it's like, oh yeah, it's a dolphin mm -hmm. pick me too or like that. But the problem is it only has one cockpit, so the second captain is kind of screwed, so I thought, okay, well, the ship doesn't need air, so, you know, it works out. Yeah, I thought that was a very um, kind of clever way to be like, yep, this is how we're going to get around that uh, minor inconsistency. <laughs> he does not need to breathe, so. So then, you know, obviously Pikmin 251 has been uh, completed for three years mm -hmm. or almost three years now. You know, and, and you've talked about um, different things that you would now, how much uh, Pikmin to ROM hacking has kind of advanced different things you would maybe change about Pikmin 250. Oh yeah, a lot of stuff. Obviously, number one thing is give Orange Pikmin more use, make the explosion pipes more common. I would like to go back and do a lot more custom enemies and treasures. Maybe like entirely custom treasures, but that would be hard. Now, uh, would you say you usually work mostly alone or do you kind no, of have not, like- Not a, anymore. Not I, anymore. The hacks I'm working on these days, I could never do by myself. I have friends that handle making music, the models, the textures, and all that. I, stuff I couldn't do myself. I owe them a lot for what I am. Yeah, my plan is to finish the stuff I'm working on now. And I think I'm going to go back to Colossal Caverns first, because I already promised an update to it, and then I kind of got sidetracked. But after that's done, that's when I go back to 250. Mm -hmm. That's my plan. So, I mean, this is mostly about... Pikmin 251, but I would like to touch on other Pikmin projects that you've oh, yeah. done and kind of breakthroughs that um, you've had. So tell me a little yeah. bit about the Pikmin 2 ROM hacking scene as somebody who does not uh, really follow it all that much. Well, right now, there are three big hacks I can think of that are similar to 251. You got Pikmin S, which is a friend of mine, Zach, is working on that. Mm -hmm. It's got all new Pikmin types, levels, treasures, 
all the usual stuff. It's gonna be similar to 251. I mean, I hope it will. Uh, there's the Puffman, which is basically a similar idea, except all the Pikmin types of the Puffman from hmm. the first game. That one is gonna be big. And then there's Pikmin New Fortune, which you might have heard of. That one. Yeah, that's one they're, that has um, been consistently Puffman. recommended uh, to me. Yeah. And then I'm like, guys, it's, it's not out yet. <laughs> yeah, it's got a long ways to go. It's it's a very big project, and I'm hoping we can finish it eventually. Mm -hmm. But besides that, I have my own project that I've been working on for over a year now, which is Pikmin 1 Squared, and it's a re remake of the first Pikmin game, like in the second game's engine, so it has a lot of improvements. And mm -hmm. It's going to have new features. And has there been um, like released footage for that? I have one trailer on my YouTube. One trailer Most on the YouTube? It. So you're like Hopefully. recreating the enemies and stuff too? Yeah, it's got the Cannon Beetle, Smoky Prog, Greenwix. I mean, they all need a lot of work still, but mm -hmm. they're all going to be in Pikmin 2. So that just gives you an idea of the kind of stuff I can do these days. If I came back to 51, it could have Smoky Prog's in it. And that would be fucking That sounds awesome. Now's kind of your chance, you know, if you want to if you want to plug yourself or plug your, yeah. your, your YouTube or anything. Well, I think I've done enough promoting what I'm working on now, One Squared. And yeah, I mean, I got my Discord server. I highly, highly recommend you go there if you care about the stuff I do, because I don't really post anywhere else very actively. But I do have a Twitter and a YouTube. Mm -hmm. Those you can see in my server. And absolutely. There will be links in the description to the okay. YouTube, uh, his Discord, as well as his Twitter. Uh, mm -hmm. For those of you who are interested in Pikmin 2 ROM hacking and want to uh, get more involved in that community. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, this has been really cool. Thank you, Pickhacker, for coming out of the show. Uh, you had a lot of really awesome nuggets of wisdom come from you. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing what you do in the future. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. And if you guys enjoy the content, you literally already know what to do. Uh, be sure to leave a like, comment, Subscribe, all of it feeds the algorithm. All of it helps my channel out greatly. Uh, if you want to go check out Pick Hacker stuff, uh, obviously all the links are in the description, the Twitter, the Discord, the YouTube. Uh, Pikmin 1 Squared, comment at some point, and a whole bunch of other awesome stuff is over in his Discord as well for you to check out. So thank you all for watching. I'm going to get out of here. Till next time.